Islamic tradition says the Quran is the final revelation from God delivered to the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, through the angel Gabriel. Its revelations were said to have been recorded first orally and then in writing through Muhammad and his followers up until his death in 632 AD and then compiled by the first Caliph Abu Bakr and then codified during the reign of the third Caliph Uthman so that the standard codex edition of the Quran or Mus'haf was completed at around 650 AD. However, manuscriptal evidence suggests that the Quran was canonized at a later date, 150 to 200 years after the death of Muhammad. Each of the major manuscripts will be looked at. First, one of the oldest Quranic manuscripts in existence is the Sana manuscript, so called as it was discovered in Yemen during a 1972 restoration of the Great Mosque of Sana, a mosque that is dated to the 7th century AD. The Great Mosque was built by many Muslims, some of whom may have been Muhammad's companions, as according to Islamic scriptures, link in the description, Muhammad made plans for its construction around 630 AD. Archaeologically, its confirmed history dates from 705 to 715, when the Caliph Al-Walid I expanded the mosque to much larger dimensions. Today, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The manuscript was identified as a palimpsest in 1981. A palimpsest can either be from a scroll or a book from which the text has been scraped or washed off so that the page can be reused for another document. With all the corrections made to it, it is still not 100% complete, nor is it exactly the same as today's standard Quran. Muslim scholars assign the manuscript to the reign of the third caliph and link it with the standardizing the Quran from around 650 AD. Although the parchment and not the writing is dated 650 to 670 AD, this date is only for one of the detached leaves. In their research, Sadigi and Bergman, page 348, carried out a radiocarbon analysis and found it 56.2% to be within four years after Muhammad's death, 75.1% for 14 years after Muhammad's death, with 99% for 43 years after Muhammad's death. However, Sadigi of Stanford University and Qadazi of Harvard University in their published research in 2012, Sana and the Origins of the Quran, page 1, write that their analysis showed that the surahs or chapters were formed earlier than this date, which suggests a pre-Islamic origin. Dr. Asma Hinali, in her studies of the Sana script, cites in her book, the Sana Palimpsest, that it has flaws in its transmission during the first centuries of Islam. She discovered in the palimpsest that it contained two superimposed Quranic texts within two layers of writing on 38 leaves of parchment. All this research suggests that the manuscript version in use in Sana at the time should have been burned as it predates the Uthmanic Quran, because according to tradition, the reason why he ordered the destruction of copies of the Quran was that there was a chance that they differed in some way compared to his final revised text. Because if these copies of other Qurans had all been exactly the same as his, there would be no reason for him to burn them. Even if the Sanan manuscript was from the time of Uthman, according to Islamic tradition, it should still have been burnt by him because the Sanan manuscript differs from today's Quran. So what are its faults? Well. More than half of its texts are in ambiguous letters in need of diacritical marks for understanding. It contains added vowels that helped correct previous mistakes. It includes orthographical changes and many deviations that are not mentioned in later Qurans. Using UV light, it was detected that its manuscript texts were either scraped or washed off so that pages can be reused. The discovery of written text washed below that of an existing script is called script defecto. A foremost expert who cited works 
a reference in Islam Beyond the Truth, Dr. al Takulaj concluded that this was evidence that there was tampering in the Quranic manuscript. The findings prompted Muslim scholars such as Muhammad Mustafa al-Azami, professor at King Saud University, to acknowledge that there are copious errors in Quran manuscripts. He said, in the history of the Quranic text, from revelation to compilation, a comparative study with the old and the new, quote, that there are over 250,000 manuscripts of the Quran scattered all over the globe. When comparing them, it is always possible to find copying mistakes here and there. This is an example of human fallibility and has been recognized as such by authors who have written extensively on the subject of unintentional errors. To give an illustration, here are just some examples of major variants in the Sana Palimpsest taken from just a couple of verses. Quran 2196, the words your heads ro'usakum is missing from the manuscript which is found in today's reading. In the same verse, it has the word should any one of you in the manuscript instead of if any of you. Again, in the same verse, the words arms, sadaqah, is missing from the manuscript. For Quran 2, 2 or 1, the word hasanatan, which means good, is missing from the manuscript. This also shows that the differences in the Quran are more than just dialect and pronunciation. In Al Mus'haf al Sharif, attributed to Uthman bin Affan, both Sunni Muslim professors, Dr. Tayyar al Takulaj and Dr. Ikmaluddin Issan Aglu, carried out extensive research on other Quranic manuscripts. About the Topkapi manuscript, they say it is not Uthmanic as was previously thought. It is dated to be around mid 8th century and it contains 2,270 consonantal differences from today's Quran and 22% of the Quran is missing when compared to today's Quran. These two professors also studied other scriptures such as the Samarkand manuscript in Tashkent. For several years prior to the Sana manuscript, it was thought to be the oldest copy of the Quran in existence, traditionally considered to be one of a group commissioned by Uthman himself. It too was found to be dated to around early to mid 8th century. It also contains undisciplined spelling in textual writing styles indicating a multiplicity of scribes, scribal and copyist mistakes, and written by someone with little experience. It also contains later editions and goes only to chapter 43, with a staggering 66% of the Quran missing when compared to today's Quran. For example, when the modern Egyptian standard edition is compared to the Samarkand Quran, it shows the human errors that were corrected when the current Egyptian edition was made. The same human corrections, additions and manipulation is also applicable for other manuscripts. For the sake of brevity, here are just a few examples of the corrections made to the manuscript when compared to the modern standard copy. The Tashkent manuscript of Quran chapter 20 verse 3 is without the letter noon, but the modern version includes it. The Tashkent manuscript of Quran chapter 36 20 is missing the letters Ya and Noon, which the modern version has. The Tashkent manuscript of Quran chapter 36 verse 21 is missing a letter Mim, which the modern version has. In the Tashkent manuscript, the form for letters for Al-Qaf is present in Quran chapter 19 verse 72, whereas the letter Nun occurs in the modern versions. The Tashkent manuscript of Quran chapter 20 verse 108 is without the letter Seen, which is in the modern version. In the Tashkent manuscript of Quran 769, there is a letter seen, whereas in the modern versions have the letter sword. The Tashkent manuscript of Quran 2079 has a letter noon, 
was the modern version of the letter Ya. In the Tashkent manuscript or Quran 3826, it is without the letter Ya, whereas the modern version has it. There is an extra Ya in Quran 2.15 in the modern Arabic Quran, which is not found in the Tashkent manuscript. The Tashkent manuscript of Quran 1883 has the letter Mim that was replaced by the letters Nun and Ya in the modern version. The pronoun Hua, He, is present in the Tashkent manuscript of Quran 2284, whereas the modern Arabic version has the word Allah, thus a whole new word has been added to the verses. In the modern version of Quran chapter 2 verse 57, the word Alaikum on you appears, which is not in the Tashkent manuscript, but a small portion remains in the margin where it was sought to add it. In the Tashkent manuscript of Quran chapter 6 verse 11, the letter Lam precedes the letter Mim, making the word not, whereas in the modern version a letter Tha is in its place, making the meaning of the word then. In the Tashkent manuscript of Quran 7.27, there are the letters Mim and Noon making the word from, which is missing from the modern Arabic version. In the Tashkent manuscript, an Alif letter is in Quran 5.99, which was replaced in the modern Arabic version with the letter Ya. 2009, Dr. Tayyar al tukalach studied the al husseini manuscript in Cairo. Again, he found it to be not Uthmanic, as it dates from early to mid 8th century. And again, it contains major differences from today's Quran. Dr. al tukalach studied the Paris manuscripts and found it also to be from the 8th century, that it too had corrections to the text that it disagrees with the modern standard Quran in 93 places, that its handwriting suggests that there were at least five different copies and was later modified with erasures and additions. A staggering 74% of the Quran is missing from today's version. Often touted as being Uthmanic, the Tubingen Quran manuscript pictured here on the right According to a foremost expert, Dr. Alba Fideli, in her research relevance of the oldest Quranic manuscripts, attributed this particular manuscript to the 8th century AD. She also comments upon some of the variants, such as dots added onto the script, including other later additions and deletions made to the script. Also, it is not the full Quran, as it constitutes only about 26.2% of the total text of the Quran of today. In 2015, there was the discovery of Quran parchments at Birmingham University. Carbon dating of the pages put it between 568 to 654 AD, making them the oldest fragments of the Quran found thus far. However, the problem is that they are only fragments with only two pages discovered and containing only parts of surahs 18 to 20. Clearly, this is not the entire Quran. The other problem is that the dates predate Muhammad's birth, so it is not from the Uthmanic era of Quran standardization. All this adds further uncertainty about how the Quran emerged, such as could Muhammad and his early followers used a text that was already in existence, taken from Jewish or Christian readings or from pre-Islamic poetry. After all, the subject of the fragments is about Moses, the seven sleepers of Ephesus, along with Dulcanain, the Alexander legend, with an extended retelling of the virgin birth of Jesus. These are all subjects pre-Islamic Arab Christians used to believe, so along with its dating and content, increases the likelihood that the fragment may not have originally been a Quran at all, but fragments of stories that were eventually incorporated into the Quran 
at a later period. In other words, a discovery of the fluidity rather than the rigidity of the Quranic compositional process from other earlier sources. This will be covered in more detail in the next video. The other issue for the Birmingham manuscript is that the date is for the parchment only, not for the ink or the writing itself, which could quite conceivably post-date it by decades or even centuries. Evidence of this has already been discovered as its texts had been erased and written over, clearly visible in the close-up picture on the left. Further, the style of its text, seen later than the date suggested by radiocarbon analysis, something that even Muslim researchers have noticed. For example, Dr. Saud Sohan, who is the director of the Center for Research on Islamic Studies in Riyadh, is skeptical about its early date. He questions whether the parchment might have been reused as a palimpsest, and also notes that the writing had chapter separators and dotted verse endings. These are features of the Arabic script, which is believed not to have been introduced to the Quran until much later. Also, Dr. Mohammed Isaweli, lead curator for Persian and Turkish manuscript at the British Library, seems to be open to the possibility that the Uthmanic redaction took place earlier than previously thought. Dr. Sadigi has posited the idea that the Birmingham manuscript is nothing more than a companion text, which was later modified into one harmonized form during Uthman's reign. So the conclusion, there is a clear pattern emerging where all these scholars' conclusions are contrary to the common narrative of an unaltered Quran standardized 20 years after the death of Muhammad. Today, there are no complete manuscripts or Quran from Uthman's time to be found anywhere, nor is there any Quran that stands up to the claim of Uthman having standardized a complete error-free Quran that was sent to various provinces. It does not simply fit the historical record as told in Islamic tradition, especially as it states that Uthman had sent these copies to major centers in the Muslim empires, mentioned in a previous video. All these cities and areas have always been under Muslim control, yet there is not a single copy of these original Uthmanic manuscripts or Qurans to be located or found today. The oldest known Quranic manuscript is from the 7th century, and even that is not complete. Furthermore, the Quran has undergone continual change ever since until more recent times. The term complete is emphasized because today's Quran is claimed by Muslims to be complete. But how is it possible to get to today's complete Quran from incomplete manuscripts? Memory is an imperfect system of record and preservation as already evidence from past videos. Notwithstanding the many Quran variants issue and companions with their own unique versions of the Quran that differs from today's Quran. So unless there was a manipulation of the Quranic text, it is not possible to get to today's so-called complete Quran from previous incomplete manuscripts. Thank you.